everybody, welcome back to the channel. And today we're back out on the Porsche 924. Today's job is gonna involve one of these, a slogging spanner. And it's to remove one of the nightmare bolts that reside on the Porsche 924, namely the rear drum assembly. And there is a castle nut there that causes all horror stories. So let's get out there and I'll show you how to remove it. Okay, so you can see that I'm under the back of the car and uh, we have access to the rear back plate on the drum and you can see, maybe even just here, there's a slight grinding just on the drum itself with the drum shoes, that's with the handbrake off, so there's a little adjuster there which you should be able to make out, which is a little star shaped type bolt that you move up or down to adjust how the shoes fit against the drum itself. So I've just had a little tweak on that and I actually think it's okay, but um, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take off the wheel, take off the castle nut, uh, show you a quick trick on that as well, and give the drum a bit of a clean up because that most likely is the issue is that when a car's been sat for a little bit, um, it could have, yeah, just got a bit uh, stiff in some of the mechanism and just needs a bit of a clean up and uh, grease up and everything should be good again. So let's uh, get taking the wheel off and uh, the castle nut and we'll get showing you this little trick. Right, you would have seen me remove the wheel and uh, we now have access to the drum and the dreaded castle nut. Uh, this nut gives people a lot of anxiety. There are actually two bolts on the car on the 924 that give people a lot of issues and it's this one in particular and the other one is the crankshaft bolt. Both are very highly torqued and there's horror stories out there of, you know, especially on this one where you're you know, standing on breaker bars that snap and then scaffolding bars that uh, you know bend and you know these things don't budge so there is a, a special tool actually from back in the day I, I think they're quite hard to come by but equally they're quite expensive so generally the idea is that you get yourself a good socket set a good high powered impact gun you know whether it's uh, battery charged like this or air gun those also do struggle to get this off. So there is a simple method that I've come across. Now, some people might think it's a bit archaic, but uh, it's one of these, it's a, a slog spanner and uh, it fits very, very nicely over the bolt itself. And then you gently tap with a persuader. I found it much easier to undo that with one of those because you're just not putting too much stress. I mean, I know it's a slight impact, but uh, you just tap it smoothly, nothing too excessive, and this one will break free, and then you can unscrew it nice and easily. So let's get on and do that, and uh, we'll have a look inside the drum. Okay, so you would have seen me just remove that dreaded castle nut with that method that I showed you and the slogging hammer. 
Now, when you do that, obviously you've got to have the handbrake on, obviously the car in the air, so it holds the drum still. And it really is just little taps just to release it. You don't need to go too crazy, too hard, and just work your way around it. So that's now removed. As you saw at the beginning of the video, there's a, a little uh, hole on the back of the backing plate there that you have access to the star bolt and you just then wind that down on the off side, which this, uh, this one is, uh, you just wind it down so that that loosens and pulls in the mechanism of the drum pads or drum shoes, I should say. And that now should give us access to pulling off the drum. So everything moves freely. I'm gonna start to move this out. It might need a little persuasion with the hammer as well just to knock it out to loosen it off but uh, let's let's get this uh, drum brake off now So that's the drum brake removed, as you can see there. And you will see that a lot of the component pieces inside look fairly new, because they are. I really have only done, I think, probably five to 700 miles on these. Uh, so very, very little wear on the shoes. And everything is in very good condition. So it does need a little bit of a clean up. So everything has that sort of layer of uh, brake dust across it and some of the backing plate could do with a bit of a wire brush so I'm going to just give everything a bit of a clean give the inner sort of uh, drum sides a bit of a clean so you can see that uh, everything is as it should be so yeah I didn't expect anything too bad but uh, a good clean up should, uh, should fix that fluctuation that they picked up in the MOT last time um, once we've got it all cleaned up, we'll just adjust that uh, that star mechanism there. And that is literally just turning it up till the wheel feels a little bit of grabbing and then just back it off slightly so the wheel spins freely. Uh, obviously just check with the handbrake that it locks up the wheel when you pull the handbrake up as well. And that should be everything needed to fix that uh, that small issue on the back drum. So let's get cleaning. Okay, so everything is nice and clean, no leaks, everything is wiped down nicely, so no issues there. I am, while the car is up, going to do a little bit more of, uh, a little bit of winter care on the underbody. There's a few places that I think uh, it will do nicely to add that in. You can see there the uh, gas shocks that I've got fitted, I did a few years ago, that uh, support torsion bar at the back here but um, everything looks in good good order so no need to worry anyway so we'll get uh, this hub or the drum unit back onto the hub itself we'll tighten down that uh, castle nut and yeah that that should be it 
nice and easy, as they say. Okay, so you would have seen me reassemble the drum hub. I've put the castle nut back on. I did that hand tight, but then got the spanner or the slogging spanner just to firm that up. You can see the handbrake is not on, so it's freewheeling at the moment. And the idea is that we go behind through that hole on the backing plate and start to adjust that uh, star mechanism that I showed you earlier. And we just want to adjust it until it's biting against the actual drum brake hub itself and then we back it off slightly so it's freewheeling. Once that has been set, we can then put the handbrake on tight and that's when we firm up this castle nut using the slogging hammer and we'll knock it around at least, I would say another quarter and a half or quarter and a bit in terms of these positions here on the castle hub till we see the, the hole that goes through for the split pin and that uh, will then be tight enough. So think of uh, the, the torque settings, I think are around 160 plus, uh, don't quote me on that, but uh, I know it's pretty high up there. But once you get the slogging hammer and get that around, there is only a certain amount of you know, torque that you can put on these in terms of where the hole lines up. So we should be all good there. And uh, let's get this all adjusted, get this uh, set up and then get that pin through. And that should be, all good to go. Okay, so that was nice and smooth. You would have seen me basically adjust at the back till it started to grind and then just backed off a little bit. I think it was literally a couple of turns down if, if no more than that. And uh, then we put the handbrake on after it was freewheeling, put the handbrake on, that locked nice and tight. So that means the adjustment with the handbrake all works perfectly. And then you would have seen me with the slogging hammer literally hit that round a quarter turn if not a little bit more and uh, hopefully that will focus and there you can see the hole which the split ping goes through and uh, that is it we we put that split pin through that is torqued down perfectly I could get my torque wrench on that and it would definitely hit the the 160 plus I think uh, with with no issues at all but um, I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments uh, there, the numbers on that. I think I've got it in Haynes. I just uh, haven't looked recently. But that, that will line up nicely. That's all tight. The hub is locked uh, in nicely. The handbrake is on. And uh, we'll get the split pin through and then take the handbrake off and everything should freewheel perfectly. So that is a job nicely done.
Okay, so that's all the work done on the rear drum. It's all been cleaned up and that dreaded castle nut has been put back on at the right torque with the split pin through it. So hopefully there won't be any fluctuation on the drum assembly as it's spinning around. So we, we tested it and it seemed a lot smoother than before. So hopefully no issues when it comes to the MOT. If you like the videos and you really enjoy the work on the 924, please do subscribe, please follow on Instagram and a lot more videos will be along very soon.